Hi, welcome to this video in which we will see how firewalls can be integrated with Cisco application-centric infrastructure. Here you can see the application policy infrastructure controller. This is the controller, the management from which an application-centric infrastructure fabric is managed. You can see here we have a simple topology with one spine, three leaves and one APIC controller. Let's have a look at how application network requirements are defined. We have here an application which is composed out of databases, web servers and external clients. You can define so-called contracts that define which communication can be established between different components. If you don't define communication, this communication will be forbidden, as in the case of clients and databases. Here's the design we have. It's interesting to note that the web servers and database servers are in the same subnet. Still, they cannot communicate to each other freely and clients cannot access them as well as they can access web servers. What we are seeing here in this screen. You see the client can ping the web server, but it cannot ping the database server because we haven't defined that flow as an allowed communication. Right, uh, this was a short introduction into the um, filtering capabilities of ACI, but let's assume we want to replace this filtering in ACI with a proper file. We want to replace routing in ACI with routing and, of course, uh, traffic filtering on a file. We will use a Cisco ASA appliance. We have a virtual machine with just one IP address for management, otherwise it's empty of any other configuration. We will introduce this firewall in data flow and for that we have to define what we call service graph, which is a graphical representation of the network services that are required for this application. This is easy enough, only a firewall, it could be a chain of load balancers, SSL offloads and other network services. Once we have defined that service chain, we just need to, to, um, to, to, to bring it into the picture. Before that, so that we don't have duplicate IP addresses in the fabric, let's remove the existing IP addresses in ACI. The two .1 addresses that were acting as default gateways for client and, and servers are now removed. The controller will push this configuration chain to the fabric and in a few seconds we will see how ping stops working because the default gateway for the client and the servers will disappear. We see now it's still going on. Now they're stopped. That means the default gateway has been removed from the fabric. Now we can safely introduce the firewall into the picture. For that, we need to go back to the application policy infrastructure controller, go to uh, the contract which defines the communication allowed between client and web server. In this case, it's the web contract, there we go. And here we will define the service graph that we want to use. In this case, the service graph one that we defined a couple of seconds ago. Submit, and we are done. This is uh, the amazing simplicity, simplicity of service insertion in ACI. Going back to the firewall, we can see IP addresses have been configured and a security rule set is there as well. The security rule set is pretty simple. It's permit um, SSH, any, any. And you can see here in the um, ASDM that uh, um, um, what, what it's doing, uh, the graphical representation and, and everything else that the ASDM can show, such as logs. Let's go back to the server and see whether this is working. Ping is still not working. That's OK, because only SSH is allowed by the firewall. So let's see whether SSH goes through. Exactly. So we can SSH into the web server. So now we prove that the firewall is in the data path. So why is this useful at all? What can we win with this? First, the rule set in the firewall is extremely simple. Still, security is provided by because the ACI fabric is filtering IP addresses. The firewall rule set is very simple and doesn't need to be modified even if you add or remove servers because that's done by the ACI fabric itself. Secondly, replacing firewalls is very, very simple, as you just saw. 
So imagine how easy it would be to do a firewall migration maybe between firewall vendors or from virtual to physical. Thirdly, you have a, second, a single pane of glass for every network related configuration including firewalls, load balancers, etc. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.